Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Hey, good to see you all. It's Wednesday night. I'm excited. We're going to dig into the Word of God in just a minute here. Uh, we, we love those nights together where, where we can explore and just see God's Word revealed to us, right? I'm excited. Pastor Chris uh, uh, asked me to preach today. I'm always honored when, when I'm asked. It's a joy. It's a privilege. I don't take it lightly. I've been praying for you and I've been praying for God to give us a word tonight. And I believe, I really believe He, he will. I really believe He will speak life to you tonight. I'm excited about that. Before we go into the Word of God, uh, I, I, I have a, an exciting uh, little announcement like a tea to give you guys. Are you ready for that? Uh, this, uh, this city is a very young and vibrating city. The, the, the UT alone, UT alone has over 55,000 students, right? College students. So I'm happy to tell you and announce that I believe uh, that we are called to reach the college students in our city, right? I believe that, that, we are, that we will see God move through our city and touch young people. There will be a movement of young men and women that will rise up and, and, and be changed to know God, to find freedom, to discover their purpose and be sent out to make a difference. Right. So this fall, this fall, we will start a young adult community, a young adult movement here at Reach Church. And it will be called, can we get the first slide up? It will be called The Movement. All right? A young adult movement that will be the, the movement. We have, we have revolution youth movement in that room right now. And, but we believe the movement will continue when they grow out of youth ministry and will get into the young adult years. So uh, Sunday, September 11th. All right, next slide please. Sunday, September 11th, we will start the young adult community here at Reed Church. Now, I'm aware that not all of you are young adults in this room okay but I believe some of you might feel like a young adult the definition of a young adult I guess I don't really know but I guess you would say it's between 18 and 29 right but I'm 34 I'll be there okay so if you're young and you're mine and you're spirit like me you can come if you're 34 if you're 35 you're too old are you too old yes too old you can't do it right but, but we really believe Jesus will be preached clearly that night and, and the gospel will be presented. We believe God will touch the young people in our city and that this will start a movement that will continue, that will grow, that will reach our city and touch our city. So if you know young adult, if you are a young adult, I hope you come. I hope you can be there. It's, it's 9-11th, uh, uh, 6.30, we open the doors. It's going to be an amazing night. Uh, or if you're not a young adult, in invite as many as you can right we want people to come and know God we will talk more about this later we will have invite cards and all of that for you to pass out and help us to bring people here um, but I just wanted to give you that little teaser tonight it's going to be an exciting exciting fall are you excited Yes, me too. Also, I want to remind all of you about Reach College. It will start up this fall. Actually, this month, the last week of this month, we're going to start Reach College again. I've been praying for you. Many of you have signed up already. I believe there are more people in our church that are called to take a year at Reach College. If you want to grow in your faith, if you want to dig into the Word of God, if you want to explore who God is and get to know Him better, Reach College is for you. We are rebuilding it. I'm excited. We're going to work together with Mission SOS and Johannes Amritzer. And we're going, to, we're going to build a unique thing here at Reach Church that is called Reach College that will equip and, and prepare you for everything that God has planned for your future and your adventure. So I'm challenging you guys. Pray for it. If you feel something, a tiny bit in your heart, then I want you not to pray, God, is it your will? will for me to go. I want you to pray, God, stop me if I'm not supposed to go because I'm going all in right now. All right. 
So you go to reachcollege.org and you find all the information. It's Monday to Thursday, 8 a.m. to noon. So it's four days a week, half days a week, and it's going to change your life. Maybe you can't go, but there is someone that you're thinking about right now that should go, that you want to send. Maybe you can sponsor someone. Maybe you can send someone to have their lives changed. Please go and check it out again. All right. Are you ready for the Word of God tonight? All right, grab your Bible or grab your smart tablet, whatever you have or dumb one. I don't know what you have, but grab it and hold it up. Let's declare together tonight. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Your word is a lamp to my feet, is a light to my way. It's food to my spirit. It's deliverance to my soul. And it's healing to my body. So tonight I receive and tonight I obey your word. Amen. All right, we're going to dig in tonight. I'm excited. And it, th this word came to me, well, well I would say this started, this started to speak to me on, on Sunday morning when I went up early to pray for the services and I opened my Bible and, I, I, and I'm following the one year Bible reading plan that we recommend as a church, everyone to, to follow that will take you through the whole Bible in a year. And we were in Ezra, the book of Ezra here on Sunday morning. So I read it and and it started to speak to me and then we came to church we had three amazing services pastor chris spoke on vision and and if you if you missed it please go on to our podcast or website listen to it check it out it's it's so good all right so we were here three amazing services and then we had meet and greet on sunday night or, or, or dinner or or meet and greet if if people are new to the church they can come and check it out it was amazing so between three third service and and the meet and greet me and Stephanie my wife we we thought well we we can barely make it home and before we 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 need to drive back again so let's go out and eat so we drove down to the domain uh, it was a, a good and a bad idea you know it was very hot uh, it was extremely warm and it's the outside gallery or mall whatever you want to call it and but we had a great time we brought our kids we ate good food a lot of people it was really hot but we walked Walked around there at the domain after after we had lunch and 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 my wife she she walked into all those shops and I I let her you know <laughs> and she could look at everything she bought some gifts for people but as, as as we were walking around I looked at my kids I saw my children I have three kids nine seven and five and they were they, they were full of life they were full of laughter they were talking to one another they were dancing on the streets they were were holding hands and and please so so we can be clear here here tonight that's not always how they behave all right so so do you guess what I looked at it and I'm like I will not even talk to them I just want to watch them I don't want to disturb anything going on right now because they're not always like this you know what I'm saying like rah, siblings and all of that but for some reason a good reason probably good parenting or whatever they, they were having a great time right on Sunday uh, at the domain all right so my wife looked in different stores and I looked at my daughter my nine-year-old daughter and she was dancing through the stores literally jumping skipping dancing smiling singing she was not ashamed or worried what other people would think about her she was radiating confidence and you know when I saw that you know what happened with me her daddy I was so pleased can you relate to that if you're a parent you can relate to that I was just so happy to see my girl, my baby girl, just radiating that self-confidence, that self-love, that self-value, that love for life and, and, and you're skipping through life. You know what I'm saying? Dancing made me so happy. And there in one of the stores, I don't even remember the name of it, but it's, it smelled good. I remember that. In one of the stores, and this, I, I looked at her and this scripture came to me. From, from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, listen to this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please God without faith. Did you hear that? It's impossible to please God without 
faith. I need faith to please my heavenly father. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. If you're a son, you're a daughter of God. How can I please him? Like my daughter pleased me on Sunday by walking in faith, right? By, by, by radiating faith. Without faith, I cannot please my God. I can try hard. I can do my best. I can try to figure it out. But the Bible tells me without faith, I cannot please my God. Right? So what pleases God? Well, faith is the first step. Faith is some way related to confidence, right? Not self-confidence, but God-confidence in me. I know God's got this. I know God will never fail me. I trust my God so I have faith that everything will be all right. So I can speak that even before I see it, right? That's what faith is. So I want to talk about faith here for a couple of minutes tonight. I want to speak faith into your life and a lot of situations that might have seemed dead in your life, they will come alive tonight. Are you ready for that? Things will start to spark in you. Things that, that, has, that has forgotten dreams will be remembered tonight and you will start to walk in them again and put action back into them. Why? Because faith is here tonight. Tonight, I believe it, I speak it, I declare it. Our Heavenly Father will be pleased. Like I was pleased when I watched my daughter on Sunday. God will be pleased when He's looking to reach church in Austin, Texas tonight because we will speak faith. We will walk in faith. We will please Him tonight. Are you with me? All right, so the main scripture for tonight, we find that in Romans 5, 17. It says this, it's a longer verse, but by the end of the verse, it says this, we are to reign in life as kings. That's the end of that verse. So we are to reign in life as kings. Listen, when God looks at you he does not see you as defeated or or barely getting by or or taking a leftover position not at all God sees you as a king God sees you as a queen you have his royal blood flowing in your veins you and I are supposed to reign in life that's what the Bible says and listen now, the word reign means a, a, a time of power. When you have power for a specific time or for a specific season. So reign means I have the power for this season, this time. Now, God told us in this verse to reign how long? In life, right? Reign in life life that means listen as long as you and I are alive that is your time in power as long as you are still breeding you are called to be a king or a queen not a two-year term like a mayor or a four-year term as a president your term is to reign every single day of your life and be victorious rise to new levels accomplish great things that's the call your heavenly father has placed on your life <laughs> Hey, I'm preaching myself very happy here today because I know I'm declaring the word of God over your life and over my life. We speak it out tonight, right? He, you are called to do that. We are looking at this one scripture and letting this one scripture speak to us. We are just, we are just staying here for allow, allowing this scripture to bring life and bring meaning. Faith comes from the word of God, right? We make it practical because when you read the word of God it will bring practical consequences to your life because here's the reality now okay the reality that's a nice speech but what's the reality well the reality is this that there will be many days when you and I will not feel like kings okay I woke up this morning I slept four and a half hours and woke up this morning I did not feel like a king Okay, 
I don't know. It, it wasn't like I skipped out of bed and like, oh, it's so wonderful to be the king. No, many days we will not feel like kings and queens. On those days, you need to reach down and, 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 and check your pulse because as long as you still feel, you feel something still beating inside of you, you are still alive, right? And those days you can say, look at that. I'm still alive. And God called me to reign as a king in my life, right? And I need to remind myself about that. You need to remind yourself about that new attitude. As many times, many of those times you will have to do what? Walk in faith. Because you don't feel it, so you need to declare it. You don't, you, don't, you don't feel it, so you need to speak it. You may not feel victorious. You not, may not feel like you are blessed. And those days, I will give you the inside tips now. I will give you the advice that works in my life. And let me explain. Don't get this wrong now. This is point number one for, for tonight. Those days when I don't feel like a king, my point number one, fake it till you make it. Okay? Don't misunderstand me now. Don't walk out of here and say, Daniel, he's a weird Swede. He's talking, telling us to lie in life and yeah, fake stuff and live like hypocrites. I'm not saying that. Let me explain this now to you. Here's, here's what I want to tell you. Too many sons and daughters of God are not speaking, boldly speaking faith. They are not reigning in life because they don't feel like they can. Okay? Way too many. Probably a lot of us in this room, we're not doing what God declared over our lives because we don't feel like we can do it. I, you know, I, Daniel, I need to be true to my heart. I don't feel like a king or a queen. So I need to stay true to my heart, right? 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 No, wrong. If your heart Listen, if your heart or what you feel is wrong, you don't need to stay true to it at all. Hey, hey, what are you saying, Daniel? Should I be a fake? No, no, no. I would teach you to be real, real. I would teach you to be really you, right? The way God created you to be. Listen, here we go back now to Ezra chapter 8 verse 22 where I read on Sunday morning and it all began and speak to me. It says this, Ezra 8 22. I was ashamed to ask the kings for king for soldiers and horsemen to accompany, accompany us and protect us from enemies along the way. After all, I I had told the king after all I had told him our God's hand of protection is on all who worship him but his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him okay so the background to this now and I will explain what's so interesting about this scripture the background is that the Israelites have been in captivity for 70 years they were taken from Israel to Babylonia now Persia took over Babylonia and and Persia now is, is starting to release them after 70 years to go home to walk out of captivity to the promised land just like Moses led the, the slaves out of Egypt it's similar story now and now Ezra is one of the leaders here that will bring the people home Home to Israel and in the chapter before in chapter 7 he boldly brags to the Persian king about God he said well this is the God we believe in that his hand is upon us and he will protect us from everything so I read that chapter 7 and I'm thinking if I would have been there, if you would have been there we would have looked at Ezra and all we would have thought is like wow what a man of faith. We are captives. We are kind of slaves here. And yet he's speaking boldly about our God. He is a true man of God. We would have listened to his words. We would have seen the fire in Ezra's eyes as he boldly proclaimed the power of God. But here in, in chapter 8, we see something else going, going on inside of Ezra. What we see from the outside, what we hear is like, that's, that's a guy, that's a bomb. Like he is speaking faith like crazy. But inside of him, something else is going on. He knew what he had said. 
And obviously he was reasoning as they were about to leave now like we really could need some soldiers, right? We really could need some soldiers, but hey, I told the king that like our God will protect us and I like declared it in front of the people. So now I'm ashamed to ask him for any help because I said, we don't need your help. We have God, right? So now he was ashamed. So he couldn't ask the king. So that was what's going on inside of him. Can you see it now? He felt one thing. He felt we doomed. We screwed. We can't do this, right? But he said, he declared something else. He spoke something else. Can you see what he did? He faked it till he made it, right? So that's what I'm, that's what I try to teach you now. I'm not talking about lying. I'm not talking about being a hypocrite. I'm saying this, when your soul, your mind, your thought life, your emotions, your feelings, your will, your desires says one thing. And then the Word of God says something else. You have a choice to make every single day. You have that choice to make. Will I listen to what my soul is telling me? What my reasoning is saying? What my confusion in my mind? What my, what my worry is telling me in my emotions? Or will I go back to the Word of God and see what He said and choose to declare that over my life? I'm standing here. I stood here this morning when I did barely slept and I looked at myself. You know what I did? I did not speak what was on my mind. I spoke what was on God's mind. I am more than a conqueror. This day will be wonderful. I will accomplish more today by the strength of the Holy Spirit that I've done for this past week. I will finish everything I've started. All the power of God is upon me. My soul. (laughs) 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 Right? But you can fake it. Do you know what I mean now when I say fake it? I believe this is the higher truth. I believe this is the lie. I believe the the Word of God is more true than what I sense, feel, right? Perceive. So, So here we are now. We have a choice. Who will I listen to? Where will I build my life? Because the Word of God made it clear. I'm called to reign in life. So by faith, by pure obedience to the Word of God, you need to walk like a king. You need to talk like a king. You need to think like a king. You need to dress like a king. You need to smile like a king. You need to keep your head held high as a king king is doing that's the real reality don't go by what you see go by what you know we walk by faith not by sight right Am I speaking faith to someone in this room tonight, right? Are you receiving this? There is royalty in your DNA. There is, in, in, you have the blood of a winner. You have the more than a conqueror. Your head, not tail. You're called to reign in life. Boom. That's like a bomb going off sometimes in my head. When I read the word of God, right? So this was Ezra. He felt one thing, but he spoke something else. He declared the higher power. But how did Ezra get to this point? How could he speak one thing even when he might have felt something else? How can you, how can I walk by faith? Faith comes from hearing the word of God. Faith can't be created any other way. So to walk like a king, to live according to the word, what the word of God says about me, I need to know what the word of God says about me. So number two, faith comes from reading the Bible. Well, that's simple. I knew that. I knew that, Daniel. I knew that. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that too. It's a very good reminder. Do we live it? Do we do it? Listen, Ezra 9 uh, 7, 9, and 10. This is, this is now the chapter before. This is now why he started to boldly speak. It says here in, 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 in verse 9, the good hand of his God was on him. He was, like he said, right? For, why was it on him? For Ezra had set his heart to study and interpret the law of the Lord and to practice it and teach the Lord's statutes and ordinances in Israel. So what's the key here? His heart was fully devoted to the Word of God. 
He had told the king in this chapter that God's hand is upon me. God's hand is upon the people, his people. And guess what? It was. He spoke the truth. This is why Ezra could speak it because he saw it. Right? Where did he see it? He saw it in the in the Bible, in the Word, in the promises God had declared. Pastor Chris has taught us many times and, and just recently, past, the past month here, that, that he's talking about the pathway to faith. It's so good. It's so easy. It's so simple. It's so beautiful because the pathway to, to faith is this. This is what Pastor Chris is saying. Let me remind you. First, you got to see it, right? And then you need to say it. And then number three, you seize it. And number four, you share it, right? You, you see it, you say it, you seize it, you share it. Easy to remember. And now Ezra saw, first step, he saw in the word of God the promises that God has made to keep his hand upon them. If he would not have been in the Bible, he would not have known that God promised to keep his hand upon them. And he would not have boldly declared that God will do that. And he would not have left his place of captivity. Right? So it all started with him seeing in the Bible. And when he saw it, he spoke it. And when he spoke it, God did it. He seized it. And then he walked out and thousands of people came with him and were delivered from captivity together with Ezra. What did he do? He shared it. It was not just a breakthrough in faith for him, but it was, it was a breakthrough that he could share. So what came first? Number one, he saw it. Where did he see it? In the Bible, in the Word of God, in the law of God. I want to help you. I want to help my church family. I want to make it so, so practical. So let me ask you, what does your Bible reading look like today? And I'm not saying that to condemn any, anyone in this room. Like, I would never want to condemn my family, right? I want to help you. I want you just want to sow that thought into you. How, what does it look like, right? Jesus said that, that we need our daily bread right not bread twice a month but daily bread not just twice a week but daily bread not just not just through a service at Reed church or another another church when you hear the word of God spoken to you no because you need it daily why because when the devil comes against you it will not help for you to say well my pastor has said right or my grandma believes so shoot get away the devil will say no I don't care I don't care, right? But Jesus, he responded to the attack of the devil, the devil with, he said, it is written. Even the Son of God spoke the word of God against the devil, right? So I need, you need a fresh revelation of his word so we can say it is written. I know it's written because I read it myself. We need that daily, right? We need rather consistent and daily. That's more important than a lot twice a month, right? So what is consistent and daily? Maybe for you, where you are at in life right now, maybe start with a verse or a couple of verses. Don't make it complicated. Don't go like all in and try that you try to run a marathon when you have not run a, a you know a mile in a couple of years. You see what I'm saying? Start, start with your spiritual cardio. Start where you are at. Maybe it's a couple of verses. Maybe it's one chapter. Or maybe, maybe start to follow the, the one-year Bible reading plan that we recommend here as a church. Maybe you, you can't read it all, but start with the New Testament part. Do something. You can even listen to it. You can feel yourself with it and you can read it. Listen, we are called to reign like kings and queens in life. And it will all start with the Word of God. When I see it, I can speak it. I can seize it. I can share it. And the last point for tonight. Prayer and fasting. It says here in, in Ezra 8, 23. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God will take care of us and he heard our prayer. And he heard our prayer. And he heard our prayer. Are you listening to me? He hears your prayer. He is listening to you. 
when you open your mouth when you start to seek him and say God I'm here to pray I'm here to speak to you in August as a church we want to slow down a bit and seek God as one part of the year when we just go after God right so that's why we do the 21 days of fast and prayer here that will start in just a week and a half Sunday August 21st is the first day that we do this as a, as a church as a church family and then we will fast and pray for the following 21 days the following three weeks and we will earnestly fast and pray and God will take care of us right God will take care of us maybe this is the first time that you're ever been a part of anything like this so then let us help you and take use your step let us help you to walk through it as a church right in the seat pocket in front of you behind you there is a card with some information about what fast is maybe you never fasted before you can take that and you can read it you can take it home and and study it a little bit there are there are bookmarks in the lobby with with uh, prayer needs prayer requests that we stand in faith for as a church uh, for things that we believe as a church family for this season and then there's a lot of lines for you to fill out what you are standing in faith what you believe God will do in your life in your family or your friends whatever that is and then we will meet here every weekday starting Monday August 22nd 6 30 in the morning we open the church up for anyone that wants to come and pray together with your church family our pastors will be here our staff will be here we're going to pray between 6 30 and 7 30. we're going to give you time to pray for your prayer needs we're going to help you and pray with you for your needs we're going to pray together for our corporate needs we're going to worship god together and earnestly seek him in the morning maybe I'm telling you I'm asking you maybe you can come by a couple of times every week maybe once a week on your way to work and you're sold that time invest that time into this season what is your next step take one step challenge yourself do something you never done before take that one step and do something you never done because that's the only way you will have results you never had before right if you keep doing the same things your results will be the same but maybe it's time to grow and stretch yourself a little bit maybe you never fasted in your life well this is a great opportunity when we do it together as a church start with a Daniel fast for a couple of days there is information there on the card maybe one day you can start one day two days if you've done that maybe maybe you can skip a meal a day for a couple of days and spend that time praying and reading your Bible if you've done that already maybe it's time to go to a full fast right and don't eat any solid food for a day if you've done it a couple of days if you've done it do a full week if you've done a full week maybe it's time to do the full three weeks right everyone can take one step in that and then we spend time we pray encourage you to pray encourage you to do that and read your Bible why if you don't pray fasting is just a stupid diet right it's a bad diet you will be hungry and grumpy but if you take the time and pray it's fast and I can promise you this thing. I can promise you because I have the Word of God backing it up. If we take this time and seek God and honor Him, He will honor you. The Bible says that draw near to God and He will draw near to you. And two of the most biggest, most famous, the best ways to draw near to God is by praying and fast, right? So if we do this, He promised that He will draw near to you. You're called to be a king, a queen, right? You are a king. And that's why Jesus is called what? The King of Kings. I'm a king and He's my king, right? So I will bow down before my king. I will humble myself and kneel down before Him. There are too many people. That are living below their privileges it's because their vision has been clouded by past mistakes by disappointments or maybe the way they were raised they don't feel like royalty maybe that's you 
Maybe you've been thinking that you cannot be successful. You cannot accomplish or achieve what God has placed in your heart. But I believe today as I'm speaking faith into you, something is happening right now on your inside. New seeds are being planted. They are taking root right now. Strongholds that may have been there for years and maybe are still there. Even right now they are being broken now because we declare something else over your life. Today it's time for you to rise and to say that's it. I'm not settling where, where I am right now. I, I'm still in my time of power because I'm still alive. I still have pulse beating in my body. So I will move on. I might have taken a break for a couple of years, but I have an announcement to make. I am back. I will declare faith. I will speak life and I will reign as a king. I will not take defeat as an option because my king has given me the victory can someone say amen come on let's put our hands together and praise God today and right now as something is stirring on your inside it's a time of committing to Jesus to make a quality decision to declare something over your own life to make it practical. So when we do this, by, by taking communion together, when you came in, there was a bag on your seat. You can grab that bag. Inside of that bag, there is a communion cup. Please grab hold of that. Jesus has said this about communion. He said, remember me when you break that bread because my body was broken for you. He said, remember me when you drink from that cup because my blood was poured out on that cross for you remember my love for you remember how much I suffered for you remember how much I believe in you remember my victory for your life so when we partake here in just a minute we're going to celebrate what Jesus did but it's also time of reflection and a time of quality decision. What do I need to do? What's my next step? How can I grow closer to God in my life? Maybe it's time for you to start to walk in faith and not by sight. It's time for you to, to fake it till you make it. It's time for you to choose something else than what you see, what you feel, the circumstances going on around you. Maybe that's your step. Maybe it's, it's time for you to stop using words to describe your situation and instead start using words to change your situation. When you wake up in the morning, you have a choice to make. You can describe what's going on. I'm so tired. Look at my tired eyes. I'm barely alive. I'm barely, I'm barely awake. I don't know if I can make it today. I, I kind of feel the headache will probably come before lunch today. You can describe, you can use your words to describe what's going on. Or you can use your words to change what's going on. Declare something else. Declare life over yourself. Declare life over your children, your spouse, your, your family, your situation. Declare something else. Maybe that's your step today. Or maybe your step is to bring back the Bible to your life. To open it again. Maybe listen to it in the car. Maybe read it again when you have your morning coffee. Maybe read it again together with your spouse, with your family. It is time to do something. You feel that stirring on the inside. That's your decision to make tonight. Or maybe it's to take that step in faith and be a part of the prayer and fast in some capacity. To be a part of it. To set aside a day or a couple of days every week to come in here at 6.30 in the morning and pray together with your church family and stand in faith for those things that you feel on the inside that you need to change or need to be changing your situation what is your step grab that cup right now and you peel that little lid off and you pull that bread out and, and you peel it off and you you have that a juice there 
and then we hold on to it and let's pray together father i pray right now in the name of jesus for my church family for every man every woman every family every individual in this room tonight everyone listening online or on the podcast i pray for them right now that something will stir on their inside now your word will stir it up inside of them faith will arise god and tonight they will make a quality decision as we remember your victory for us as we remember what you did on that cross 2,000 years ago and we celebrate it we will not just celebrate and clap our hands but we will do something about it we will not let your blood go to waste in our generation but it will be painted on every street it will be painted in our families upon our lives and we will make a difference in our generation God I thank you God for stirring it up inside of us tonight in Jesus name maybe as we all keep our eyes closed here tonight keep your eyes closed maybe you're here I believe you are and you need to take that first step and recommit your life or connect for the first time with Jesus he's here and he loves you so badly he wants to make you a king in life a queen in life he wants to restore your value and cleanse your heart and forgive your your sins all you have to do is to reach out to him and say Jesus that's me please forgive me see me touch me change me and he will do it. that's his promise I will count to three if that's you just lift your hand as a sign before we partake in in communion just lift your hand and say yes that's me I need to connect with God I need to reconnect with him I did it before but I've fallen away from him one make your hand ready two three you lift it up lift it up if that's you yes good hands going up everywhere thank you thank you thank you keep it up thank you thank you thank you thank you great everywhere now before we partake in this communion put that hand on your heart and I want to lead you in a prayer now and I want you to pray out loud and clear. I want you to believe every word you're saying. I want you to declare it over your own life. And I want the whole church to pray together with us. Let's pray like this. Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you for a second chance. Thank you for a third chance. Another chance. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Jesus, I believe in you. And I declare your life over my life. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. Fill me with your life and your purpose. Let me walk. Let me talk. Let me live and reign as a king or queen in my life. I want to walk with you and surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we can take that cup. And as we worship God now, when you're ready, when you feel I'm taking that decision, I'm ready to take my next step, partake in that communion, and let's worship God together.